another episode on the tow car so soon after the last one where everything was fine can't be good news can it and it isn't um i did sort of maybe prematurely say in the last episode of this that everything's fine and they're actually brilliant and in many many ways that is still true i still really really like this car but we have more faults so i'm going to make a statement which a lot of you already knew anyway and told me but again it wasn't that expensive so i took the risk this is by far the most unreliable car i've ever owned incredible how many faults this thing comes up with on a daily basis the last one though fairly not catastrophic hopefully it's going to be a uh, something that i can fix i don't know we're gonna to have to have a look into it but the brakes are stuck on why the handbrake for some reason I, I so i went to the new forest recently and on the way back apart from another big fault which we'll discuss i started to hear a noise from the back right i was like okay what's that and then all of a sudden the handbrake started making some noise and now the handbrake doesn't want to come off this happened outside somewhere which i didn't want the handbrake not to come off at and it was making this noise And there was lots of people looking at me while my car was making this noise and to be honest it was quite embarrassing <laughs> so um yeah i need to fix that because i've had to drive all the way from chester to here with the handbrake locked on the rear brakes are red hot great um there's no other option i could come and tow it with the truck i could come it but i can't get this on the tray it's too wide and i had to pay for some recovery and <sighs> i don't need this you know, I need a reliable tow car, which is something we're going to get onto because it might be, might be time to say goodbye to this. Can you see this thing here in this sort of corner of your screen? That's the tasty truck, the F250. It's from 1969. It's a 5.9 litre V8. It has never, ever broken down. I just thought I'd tell you that. Nothing has ever gone wrong with that. I did rebuild the engine, but nothing wrong with this engine, so nothing else ever. Anyway, um, so here we are. I wouldn't normally put this on the ramp either. This is 3.23 tonnes, if you believe Google. The ramp only does four ton. It was made in China and it was assembled by me. So I really don't ever want to sort of get this weight on here, but I feel like I haven't got much choice today because I need to be getting in amongst underneath, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, now, the other fault with this, it keeps going into bloody limp home mode all the time oh. Land Rovers being Land Rovers my code reader doesn't want to know okay you plug it in and it gives you basic readings off a few things doesn't want to know oh, so annoying like just ugh, modern cars so problematic fingers crossed it's a turbo actuator kind of feels like it's a turbo actuator it's got that kind of vibe going on there is a little fix you can try, which is going in underneath this wheel arch and spraying some stuff on it to see if that sort of lubes it up. So I'm going to try that today as well. And hopefully that's the one. If this thing doesn't start to play ball though, I might have a look for another tow car. And it is another Land Rover. There's a mega, mega deal on if you do a factory order on a new Defender. You can get one for just over 300 quid a month. I have another business which is VAT registered. 
I can put it through that business. Hopefully they'll never know. And that means I will just have a reliable tow car because I can't afford to be in it on a, just doing a day's work on this. Just losing a day of other stuff I could be doing and money that I could be making elsewhere and cars that I could be resurrecting. But instead, I seem to be resurrecting this from the dead every bloody day. Right, okay, let's get stuck into the brakes. I'm gonna pull the rear wheels off and we'll see if we can see what has failed. Be brave, get underneath it. It'll be fine, don't worry. Um, it's, uh, it's annoying because it's in such bloody good nick as well, this car. I mean, it's not that old, it's only 2009, but it's in really smart shape. Just wish it worked more reliably. Look at that. It's cool, isn't it? What is it? It also, a few other things like annoying me recently. It doesn't have a reverse light and it's, I, it's just something I'm going to have a look into, but the reverse light switch isn't working. I know it's the switch. So I'm just going to find out what's going on with all that, you know? And it's just things I could do without. Just want a reverse light switch to work. So what's happening at the back? My initial sort of look is just the backing plates are corroded to hell. And I wonder if a piece has got stuck in a pad or something like that. And it's not letting the, it's, it's confusing the handbrake. I don't know, but they're not in great shape at all. I can't see anything else. The wheels, there's no sort of real gouging, but we need to take them off to have a look. I can't see anything hanging down. And it honestly felt like it was something locked in that wheel. So I'm going to take these back wheels off and we'll have a better look. I thought just as I'm taking this wheel off, let's give it a spin round and see what we can hear. <laughs> Sounds like potentially catastrophic failure of the brake pads, which would be good news. Um, but does not sound good at all. And I shouldn't really be able to spin this because the handbrake's locked on. Oh my God. Oh, what about the other one? Not as bad, but still not particularly great. I wonder what we're gonna find in here. thing to mention as well is that I don't just use my tow car to tow cars around you know picking up stuff around the country all these cool classic cars cool um, I use it I have to commute to work essentially a different work in a different place and I have to do that quite often I have to be able to go there quickly I have to be able to do all that sort of stuff which I need to do tomorrow. And now I can't do in this. My only other vehicle is the truck. So I'm gonna to have to go in the truck, which is gonna cost me probably the best part of 80 quid in petrol, if I can't fix this. So when you work out the cost of a new car, warranty, no MOTs, no tires, no brakes, you know. Right, what's up with this? All the different, everything looks good as well. I don't think it's that. And the brake pads look really good as well. It is worth mentioning before we get too many clever clogs in the comments, the manual handbrake release by where the gear stick and everything is, doesn't work. In my experience, I've used those before on Volkswagens and all sorts of stuff. They generally don't tend to work that often. Because if there's usually a fault, it's usually locked in place for a reason. Sometimes it's just because batteries have died or there's an electrical fault or something. This isn't that case. So it's, it's useless. Look at this Milwaukee in action. How cool. What, again, please. Oh, thank you. How very quick and easy of you. Stupid bolts as well from Land Rover, so you can't use a normal, like, five-sided socket on it, hexagon socket on it. Oh. 
what's the point, you know, what's the theory, why? You know, they use hex, you know, sided sockets on all the other Land Rovers in the past and they went, do you know what, actually that just never worked. Modern cars, yeah, so brand new cars are fine because you've got a three year warranty. So I had a new Jag a while ago, I had an E-Pace before I started doing the YouTube and it went back to the dealer all the time, like all the time, because it was a fucking nightmare. Apparently the Defenders are a lot better though. <laughs> I'll let you know. Unless this fixes itself, of course. Doesn't give me any grief. Like what you'll know if you've been following the socials is I'm in the middle of doing the Mondeo episode, the second Mondeo episode, which I hope you'll all be pleased to know. And this is obviously a day that I could be spending on that. Let's use this metal one. It's not looking good. I don't know how well you can see here, but this just fell out and this just fell out. from up inside there somewhere. <laughs> Bats! Come on! You can do better than this Land Rover, come on. Oh my, oh my God. Oh my God, so many pieces. That is all handbrake. Oh my God, it's all destroyed. Oh my God, the handbrake has completely shut its pants. Oh, fuck's sake. Nice one. Oh, just haven't got the time for this. <laughs> fuck's sake. Oh God. Why? This is a Land Rover. Handbrakes don't go wrong on Land Rovers. They used to be in a big drum there and they were fine and everything was okay and there was never an issue. And then they made these all go electronically and oh God. Look at that. It's properly bent as well, isn't it? All the hardware. Look at that. I've never seen anything like this. Never, ever, ever seen anything like this. <sighs> what else is there? Is that there? Look, that's some sort of spring that's probably not supposed to be, not supposed to be like that. <sighs> this is going to be Land Rover main dealer as well. I'm going to have to ask them for everything to do with the handbrake. Well, I'm not driving this home tonight then, am I? Right, let's get this stripped down a bit more and see if I can see what's actually failed. Apart from all of that. I don't know how this is supposed to look like, but I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to sort of look like this. Can you see that big hole in it or whatever that is? So maybe that sort of did something and led to all this going to Valhalla. What I would love to do, right, is to pull that side off and for it to be perfect. So then I would have a map of how this works. Because if I don't, I mean, fucking hell, good luck, yeah? I can't wait to get my head around that. Like it would have got toasty warm inside here driving it here, but it does feel like it's working maybe a bit more than the other. Still definitely. Something grinding away in there though. Brilliant. The annoying thing is as well, is I really like this car. It looks great on the road. It tows so, so, so well. There's a couple of big annoying things though, like obviously the reliability, but lack of cruise control. 
nobody can fix it, nobody can code it in, um, and they possibly something to do with the old CAN bus system, not reading it properly, and maybe an issue in there, and just something that's just not good. CAN bus systems are a nightmare. CAN bus systems on this car make my trailer lights flash. Stop making them so complicated. I think they make them to fail. Do you know what I mean? They make them to only last a certain amount of time So you go in and buy a new one, which is why buying a new one might be a better idea because if you can't beat them join them, you know, what about now? Okay, still not good, not good Right, we're going in dry Oh, one other thing as well. And you don't want to just risk that at all, you know. Oh. We could be in luck. Even though I've Taken all the life off those shoes, and that one there was almost metal on metal. So I had to get some new brake shoes as well. But maybe some discs, new discs, new shoes, all new brake components, springs, levers. I don't want to have to buy new handbrake cables. I don't want to have to get into that handbrake box because that's a whole another. Oh, I think you can just about see it up there. I think you've got to take the body off the chassis, take the axle out. Oh, actually, I think it's just take the spare wheel out, but, um, and maybe some other bits. Right. I'm gonna, it's Sunday, I can't do anything. I'm gonna get in touch with Land Rover and try and price all this up, and then we'll get it all fitted. And then hope that that fixes it. Get some discs and pads. Look at the screwdriver. Is everything I own broken? Hey, you look! Jesus Christ, it's so heavy. Ugh. Um, so back brakes notwithstanding because I think I can get that sorted providing the bits are available at Land Rover but it's still relatively new this car and if not there's bound to be a breaker somewhere that could help me out probably loads of these being broken for parts isn't there <coughs> uh, so yeah um, that's not too much of a worry really it's just brakes and the brakes are easy but it's inconvenient very inconvenient and it's costing me money and taking time but the real problem is this limp home mode so nobody wants limp home mode man like you know you've got your your babe sat next to you in the passenger seat and all of a sudden your car's going into limp home mode and she's like oh is everything okay dear and the car's like beep 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 and you're like yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine so all i had to do is switch it off switch it back on again which is fine a bit sketchy at 80 mile an hour in the outside lane but it stops it and it carries on going and everything's okay now there's a million things that could be causing this which is the bigger issue of them all the first one that i'm going to start with having a look at it's a bit dry is this turbo actuator because I've had a friend of mine has had that on his car and I've sort of had experience with turbo actuators not moving freely and this is an electronically operated um, turbo actuator and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second um, but I think that could be causing it because it goes through a cycle when you switch the car on and off so I think when I'm doing that it's, it's moving it and resetting it but I think it's getting stuck if it's trying to do it sort of naturally with my foot going down on the pedal you know um so yeah it's behind here 
I'm led to believe. So I'm going to drop it down a bit, pull that out, and then we'll have a look. So it looks like there's a load of 10 mil bolts there. One, two, three, maybe, behind that heat shield. Another one down there, maybe. Could be. But I am told that that's where this turbo actuator lives, which I need to get my eyes on. Or oh, it's sort of up in here, down there somewhere, you know. In fact, that could be it there. And I know this is like, you might be thinking, God, a bit of a knee-jerk reaction, thinking of binning this off and getting a brand new expensive car, because obviously you could just fix this and use it, you know. But I'm trying to convince myself slightly, because... I've got the Mondeo episode fully underway at the moment and I need my tow car for Friday. Now, it just means that all of my other plans this week have been put on hold because I'm doing this. And I don't want to be doing this, I need to be doing the other things that I should be doing. And it just means that I can't get the videos out for you that I want to be getting out for you, or because I'm stuck under here. Whereas if I had something with a warranty, I wouldn't be that worried, I'd just be jumping in and out of it. And if something goes wrong, you take it to the dealership and they give you something with a tow bar. So yeah, that's where my head's at with this really. But if this fixes it and the handbrake is fixed, then, you know, who knows? But let's get this cover off first and see what we've got. And another thing as well, I'm supposed to be driving this rig to Bruges in January for a romantic weekend away. I'm not driving this to Bruges. Things keep bloody exploding on it, imagine that. Well, oh, that one doesn't want to come out. Oh, that's going to snap, isn't it? I can feel it. The gas. How are you, how are you supposed to see anything? So that's the turbo. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Okay. I can't really get to it from there. It looked a lot different in the video that I watched. There was definitely more access. Turns out I, the video I'd watched was for a Range Rover. <laughs> Thanks. So I can't put eyes on this turbo actuator from under there, which I really wanted to. Because it looked so easy when the man did it on the TV. And I've had my phone up in there and everything, trying to get a visual, but no joy. What's this? Do we need it? Can it go? Now, can you see it anywhere? Because I mean, I bloody can't. Can't see anything. This is not like classic cars. I like doing classic cars. This is a new one full of problems. Any, anything at all. Oh God. Why has it got a blanket on it? Um. What's that there? It's electronically controlled this as well, I don't... It's going to be right in the middle down there somewhere. Maybe if I take the under tray off, we'll be able to see it. These are the biggest under tray bolts you'll ever see. 17 mils. An eagle-eyed regular viewer of the channel did spot last time when I was doing the service in one of the last videos, and I didn't change the fuel filter. That's because it's up here on top of the chassis, underneath this thing. I didn't fancy crawling it underneath it or getting up on the ramp, so I didn't do it. The other day, because of the limp home mode, I did do it, so I have changed the fuel filter on this, and it made a cool difference, but it's good to know that it has changed, because he said his had degraded and started to fall apart and done all sorts of bad things. So anyway, that's been changed. Is this supposed to be this heavy duty? Does this used to be an armoured car or something? <laughs> I reckon you could drive over a grenade in this and it, you'd be okay. <laughs> so 
So you can see the turbo there in all of its glory. Um, but again, I just can't see the bloody actuator at all. It's behind all of that there. So I'm going to have another quick go inside here, see if I can do anything now that I've got some access from underneath. This little LED anal probe here is hopefully going to help us in our pursuit here because this is insane. And the reason I can't see it is because it's hidden. don't know if you can see where I'm putting this. Right in there. You see? Really, really difficult to get to. I just found a very helpful video on YouTube that showed me. So anyway, uh, let's get this in focus. So the C... That there, that ball, that is the end of the actuator, right? The turbo actuator, that's a really good shot of it there. So that arm that it's on there, electronically moves the turbo actuator in and out. Now the problem I've got is that this doesn't look, to be honest, in that bad a condition. Which is not really what I wanted to see. I wanted to see that sort of fairly rusty so I could try and just sort of clean it, cover grease it, which I'm still gonna do. But yeah, not massively ideal. So I'm gonna leave this there. I'm gonna go and activate that turbo actuator by turning the car on and off. I need you to keep your eye on that. Hopefully the handbrake doesn't do anything either while I'm in there, because that'd be annoying, wouldn't it? Right, okay, show me what's happening. It is moving, looked okay from what I just saw that little bit then. So, it's probably not my problem. <laughs> okay, well at least, you know, I can I know exactly where it is now. And I'm gonna get this thing, I'm just gonna start pouring plus gas in it now. And I'm gonna continue to pour plus gas in it, I think. So look, realistically, that's not what I wanted to see. <laughs> um, I try and find an image of what I actually wanted to see um, and what I thought the problem might be and then I'll try and put it up now as I'm waffling along. Um, that actuator looks like it's moving absolutely fine, everything looks okay around it, so I'm not really sure that it's going to be that, I don't know. And there's no, the lubrication parts aren't what I thought it would be, I thought you'd be able to see where it sort of goes in and does its job but we can't all we can see is the bar that's the lever going up and down so i need to do a little bit more research um so yeah i'll do that tonight and then we'll come back on this hopefully tuesday and hopefully fingers crossed i might get some parts by then as well and we can at least get the back brakes going because it's still drivable because it doesn't do the limp home mode thing all the time it just does it i don't know at the least convenient moments but We'll crack on and uh, hopefully even just doing this with a bit of grease and stuff, it might help, who knows. Righty-o then. There you have roughly 200 quid's worth and four days later, um, some brake parts. Long time, isn't it? Four days. And one of the parts I needed didn't arrive, but thankfully it's in the fitting kit for the brake shoes. So I need to get them fitted, I think. Uh, right, I'm gonna do all that, try and put it off back on, looking at the other side, and just sort of, oh, there's a bird in the workshop, you see that? Um, what's it doing here? So yeah, I'm gonna fit all that back together and I'll show you once it's all built back up. I can't, <laughs> can't wait to never do that again. Um, handbrakes and rear shoes and stuff are just not my bag. Man. It's all like pulling springs and pushing things and hurting your fingers and that. It's just fucking boring. Uh, but anyway, 
I put that together matching the other side. Thank God the other side was back together because there was a, quite a few little bits in there that I wouldn't have maybe noticed otherwise because they were just in, in smithereens. Um, so what I need to do now is get this sort of set back up central, get the disc on. There's a couple of adjustments. This little Allen key here, which when you back that off, it allows the handbrake lever to sort of, it, it's just a little pivoted thing that sort of goes down and takes up any slack. So that's going to be really good. And then I've got to wind this out until our shoes are sort of touching, then wind it back a bit, and that should be my handbrake adjustment. Oh, nice! While I've been doing this as well, I've been pouring plus gas all around that sort of turbo actuator area, hoping that that does something, but looking at the condition of it, it was in really good nick, so I don't think that's our problem. Anyway, I also phoned up uh, the contract tire place looking for to put my order in for a Defender. 300 quid a month, it's cheap as, isn't it? Um, plus I get to claim the back back. But a 12 month waiting list. I can't wait 12 months. I think I might put an order in anyway, um, cause you know, and then try and sort of keep this going for another 12 months or something. I don't know. See how it. See how it behaves. Okay, after much fiddling about and releasing the manual handbrake, which now works because this is not in a million pieces, um, I've got it to spin, which is fantastic and it feels real nice. So I've got to look through here and I've got to find this little Allen key and I'll show you what that's all about on these other things. What we're going to use for the other side that take up the slack. So these are the one of the shoes for the other side, right? And this really complicated, horrible looking, and completely unnecessary thing here. Um, it's amazing, we had handbrakes on cars for years before we started doing stupid stuff like this. So, I don't know how well you can see this, but this is spring-loaded, and it's on the little Allen key behind it, right? So let me just tighten that up. So you can see that Allen key there, you tighten that up, and now that's locked in place. Now when that's locked in place, you can see it's the same depth there, which is where it sits against the thing, right? But when you release it, the spring loadedness pushes it down so you can see the bit where it would have sat is now smaller and then it's sort of adjusted. It's already got an adjuster on the bottom, why have two adjustments? Anyway, um, so yeah, so that's how that works. I've got to do it on this now. So I'm basically taking any slack out of it, nip it back up, and then that's done, I think. And take any adjustment out of it on the other adjuster as well by the normal way you'd do a handbrake. And if you're unsure of what that is, allow me to sort of uh, demonstrate, you know. Right, so we'll do that one first. Now, can I be a really good TV presenter and maybe show you inside this hole? Ah, you can see it. So can you see that thing there that looks like a cog or a gear? So that is your adjuster. And if you put a flat blade screwdriver in there and sort of move it up or move it move it up or move it down, it will spread apart and it will push your shoes apart. It's very, very simple, and that's been the sort of case for handbrakes for a very, very long time. So yeah, I'm just gonna adjust that until this doesn't spin as freely. I mean it's pretty there already, but I'll do that. And then we release that Allen key and tighten it back up. There's all sort of guides and stuff for this on the internet. This isn't like a guy, I'm not telling you what to do. Don't listen to me, I'm an idiot. But I'm an idiot that gets stuck in, do you know what I mean? Makes bad financial decisions. Which way? That way. It's against the little spring as well, so it sort of feels like it's clicking each time, which is pretty cool. 
and such. Okay, how's that feel? Starting to hear the shoes on it now. Does that make sense? Are you following? Barely makes sense to me and I'm the one bloody doing it. Now I have to get this car, this Discovery, off the ramp today because tomorrow I have to do the last workshop day on the Mondeo. I need the ramp for it. So. This better work. Oh, there we go. Right, we're really stepping out there, so I'm just going to backen it off a little bit. Backen? Is that a word? Tiny amount more. Just a tiny amount. Right, lovely. That'll do for me. Very nice. Uh, right. Where's this Allen key? So the Allen keys directly in there and if I take the slack off it and then tighten it back up fingers crossed that should mean that we're all nice and set and what I'll do if I can be asked is in a couple of hundred miles I'll pull these wheels off and I'll just do a complete brake adjustment again and that'll keep the handbrake happy and stop it going or whatever that noise was that it made. Right, okay, put the other side back together, put the wheels on, pray to God the handbrake works. Cool! That was a very long day. It's all back together. Don't know if it's going to work or not. What do you reckon? I mean, all the brakes are together and everything, so if there's anything else wrong with the handbrake, it's going to be in the handbrake box thing. So let's fire up and see what happens. Okay. The handbrake light is still flashing. Half-eaten turkey feast in there. Could have had that. It's probably gone off now. <coughs> so it would seem that it doesn't want to do anything. Now I might need to sort of reset it using my Autel computer, me Bob, plugging it in. I think that might be the case. at the moment it's doing this it's possessed but it's not on and I can live with the handbrake not being gone I can't live it with it being on all the time but off all the time that's that's cool at least I can use it got gears you know leave it in gear um, Right, I'm going to pull it outside, grab my hotel, and we'll have a little look. One day. It's awfully dark out here, isn't it? Right, so this is our maxi check by hotel. 200 quid or so's worth of gear, and it has electronic parking brake.
Interesting, successful. Yeah, I know, I've just bloody done the thing. The procedure completed successfully. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Why failed? What's 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 wrong? Right, I need to keep going through this a bit. It probably is a little bit boring to watch, isn't it? Just going beep, words, beep, words. Um, I'll have a little play with it. In terms of the limp home mode as well, it's going to be sort of two days-ish before this video comes out. So I'm going to let you know in the comments as to whether or not the limp home mode issue is fixed for now. I'm sure it's going to come back in or I'm sure it's something else. I don't think we fixed it doing that, um, but it was worth a try. So, uh, yeah, let me have a little play with this and see where we get to. So there we are then. I've, I've had a go and it's kind of worked because the handbrake is now no longer jammed on and all the hardware and everything's all new and in there and looking great. However, it's still, the, the, it's not working. It says it can't latch. The emergency has been pulled. Great. What I think is the case is that I'm going to need to either pull the spare wheel off and check the emergency cables not pulled out or whatever or when I set the handbrake on the um, cables when I, when I attach the cables I don't know if the cable was in the right position bear with me so what I think is that on my hotel I noticed it said um, set cables to mounting position so what i should have done is set the cables to the mounting position and then mounted the brakes and then that would have had it you know enough cable or, or whatever and when you adjusted it up or something it would just be just right i didn't do that so that might be the case it might just need a drive home let the battery charge up for a bit and tomorrow morning it'll work i don't know for now though i can just leave it in gear Thank God everything's going to be okay and I can still use the bloody thing. Um, so yeah, for now, that's going to do us. I'm going to let you know in the comments what happened. I'm not going to be able to do the breaks. I'm not going to be able to have another look until next week now. But the moral of this um, episode is if you want to run one of these, you've got to either know everything about them be you know completely immersed in the world of Land Rovers and have all the equipment and everything. Um, or, because if you're going to have a go, it's going to be on your ramp for four days and it's going to cost you two or three hundred quid. Or, you stick it with a specialist and have a large bill very, very often. So that is pretty much my experience of this Land Rover Discovery ownership. Um, I'm still thinking about getting a Defender, I don't know. I'll see what my guy says, maybe stick an order in for next year and just, you know, have that to look forward to. Because this has been a week that I could have done with doing a lot of other stuff around the workshop. But anyway, it's all good. Um, at least I can take this home. And the truck's been great for the last four days. It's been fantastic, been enjoying driving it. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.